A second-year student named Nayato Hachiyugi finds himself in an increasingly difficult position when a girl in the lower year starts entertaining herself by relentlessly teasing her senpai. Before he even enters the library, he already hears the telltale noise of a bunch of girls gossiping. He braces himself and opens the door and sees four girls having a conversation. He tries to be as unnoticeable as possible and makes his way to his favorite spot. He tries to focus on his homework, but the girls are obnoxiously loud. He can't stand girls that are like that. He's becoming increasingly annoyed, but he does his best to stay quiet. However, his efforts are wasted when one of the girls goes through the bookshelf behind him. He's so nervous that he accidentally knocks his bag to the ground. To his horror, the contents of his bag scattered all over the floor, including his manga drawings. Oh no! The girls see it and start making fun of his drawings and his stories. How cruel! They mock and laugh at his story and all he can do is close his eyes and calm himself until they go away. One girl in particular takes notice of his unusual reaction. So when the other girls are done making fun of him, the girl decides to be left behind. She starts talking to him and introduces herself as a first year. Nayato is unsure what to do with the girl's over-enthusiastic and unsettling smile. Suddenly, she starts reading his manga in an annoying way clearly trying to embarrass him. The whole time she's doing that, he's just focusing on remaining calm. After reading from the manga, she insinuates that the main character, Siegfried, is meant to be him. Even though he tries to deny it, she continues that she feels sorry for both the character and him. She forces him to reenact one of the scenes, but ends up embarrassing him since he couldn't do it. He's so flustered by all her teasing that he ends up crying. Poor guy. The girl gives her handkerchief to wipe his tears and says goodbye to him after a while and apologizes for messing with him. The next day, the girl finds him outside the art room. She starts her non-stop chattering once again, but he tries his best to ignore her. He gives her the newly washed handkerchief back, he enters the room immediately, hoping that she will leave him alone. However, luck is not on his side once more, for the girl enters the room soon after. Seeing that they are the only people there, the girl begins her relentless teasing once again. When she sees him practicing his sketching on a canvas, she insists on modeling for him. When he refuses, she starts unbuttoning her shirt, saying that sexy theme is probably his thing. Nayato, on the other hand, is panicking so badly and desperately trying to stop her that he falls from his chair. He agrees to draw her only if she poses normally. She promises to give him a reward if he draws her properly. Even though he doesn't really want a reward, he still does his best. By the time he's finished, she offers him his reward, but he has to close his eyes. He's horrified by the prospect, but she insists. While his eyes are closed, he feels her coming closer, and the realization dawns on him that she's probably going to kiss him. You know what I've been loving lately? It's a new game called Isekai Slow Life, in which you're isekai as a mushroom into this amazing world, where you can be friends and much, much more with all kinds of top-tier waifus, like Melody, Freya, and Batty. As you grow closer to these beautiful maidens, you can grow your own village through farming, and even open up your own stores. Establish a school and enroll your characters in it. Create a relaxing onsen to chill in the water with them. There's so much to do. You can even join a guild or start one of your own to connect with other adventurers and explore the isekai world. You start out as a mushroom, but as you level up, you change and transform while making deeper connections with all the characters available, which believe me, are a lot. Want to join the world of Isekai and start creating your own waifu village? Then click on the link in my description below to download the game today, which by the way is an exclusive link for my channel, so by joining it through it, you'll be supporting us. You can also use this QR code I'm showing on screen, and as a special bonus, if you use the code MUSHROOM, you'll instantly get 10 free draws of useful items that can help you romance your waifus. Join up now, guys! Enjoy the slow life in Isekai. But as expected, she ends up laughing at him for expecting her to kiss him. This girl is too much. Poor Nayato. She doesn't stop her teasing until he's in tears once again. She even goes as far as calling him weak. He's so frustrated that she made him cry once again. He sits there while she wipes his tears. She apologizes for messing with him, but she's grinning mischievously. What does this girl really want with him? To make matters worse, they have to take the same route home. While he is walking, she's trailing behind him, calling him senpai over and over again. He's shocked when all of a sudden she asks him to go out with her, only for her to laugh at his face, asking if he really thought a girl would ask him out. That's just unnecessarily cruel. Her teasing gets too far that she accidentally pushes him so hard that he falls off a shallow bridge. He manages to climb back up, and the girl looks guilty for a second, but he brushes it off and walks away from her. She then asks if he ever gets angry, but what she doesn't know is that he learned to deal with bullies a long time ago. By the end of their encounter, she tells him that her name is Nagatoro, and she wants them to get to know each other. At last, he's going to have a peaceful time in the art room to read a highly anticipated manga story. 
It's dark, he's alone just like he likes, and after eating his dinner of garlic yakasoba, he excitedly brings out the manga. However, the little piece he thought he had is instantly ruined when Nagatoro finds him once again. Girl, give him a break! In his panic, he clumsily hides the manga behind him. He can't have her seeing it especially since mangas tend to have pervy themes. He knows that she'll tease him about it relentlessly. However, she is perceptive beyond belief. She manages to sniff out that he's hiding something. He tries to stuff the manga in his bag, but she manages to catch his hand. They end up having a mini tug of war to get the manga with him insisting that it's nothing pervy. She manages to get the manga and as expected the endless teasing starts. The fact that it's titled The Big Boob Vampire does not help his case at all. Nagatoro finally comes down when she realizes that it's a vampire story. Surprisingly enough, she's quite interested in the genre. She's fascinated with the prospect of love and romance with an immortal. But, of course, a conversation between the two of them will not last long without her teasing him. She insisted that he is safe from a vampire attack because they don't attack virgins. Naoto is frustrated with her, always insinuating his lack of sexual experience. He challenges her by saying that unless she is a vampire, she would not know whether he's a virgin or not. Still, she is able to find a way to make fun of him by pretending to be a vampire and tackling him to the ground. He ends up panicking so badly when she unbuttons his shirt and pretends that she's about to bite his neck. He opens his mouth to protest and she unexpectedly stands. Turns out she can't stand his garlic breath from his dinner. Get it? Like a real vampire. <laughs> he tries to escape, but she's on him once again. They end up on the ground in the most awkward position. She does not realize that her hand landed on his crotch. Poor guy can hardly breathe, especially since she unknowingly made a squeezing motion. The following teasing is to be expected after that. Naoto is not having a great day, to say the least. The next time he's in the art room to practice sketching, he's interrupted once again. Honestly, at this point, he should have expected it already. Nagatoro comes barreling into the room. She wants to play a game with him, and worst of all, it's a nipple-guessing game. And this will not end well for Naoto, that's for sure. He voices out his refusal immediately, insisting that he is not a groper. However, as usual, she teases him for reacting like a virgin. She convinces him that he will get a you-can-ask-me-to-do-anything ticket. She explains that he can make her do anything with it. While she's having fun listing the most awkward request he can make, he realizes that he can make her stop messing with him, and so he reluctantly agrees to her game. This will definitely not end well for him. She gets the first turn and he is so nervous. Using her two index fingers, she attempts to poke his nipples. At first, he's relieved that she misses it. However, it is short-lived when she swirled her finger around, hitting it and turning him into a puddle. When it is his turn, he takes too long and she pushes him to the ground. She claims that his time is out and she is now the winner of the ticket. She leaves immediately after, saying that she has to meet her friends. Just when he thought that he is now left alone, he sees her again with her friends in the family restaurant he's at. She notices how her friend has set her up with two guys. He figures that she will bully them as well, so he hides behind the seats to observe. He's rather disappointed that even though she acts coldly towards two boys, she hardly made fun of them the way she does him. Is he the only one she teases so much? It's another peaceful day and he is once again in the art room. And like clockwork, Nagatoro arrives to tease him once again. She insists on modeling for him again, but he argues that he prefers still objects to people. When he ignores her, she starts undressing in front of him. Naturally, he averts his gaze to avoid looking at her. However, his chivalry is pointless because she's actually wearing a swimsuit underneath. Turns out she's just trying out a hand-me-down from the swim team. She just wants to toy with him. Later, they find themselves soaking due to the heavy rain. He intends to go to a restaurant as usual, and she is following him. But he has no choice but to stay under a shed to wait for the rain to stop. Of course, despite the situation, she still finds an opportunity to tease him. Noticing how soaked her uniform is, she starts taunting Naoto that he wants to catch a glimpse of her body since he is a closeted pervert. He, on the other hand, is beyond annoyed that she keeps messing with him. He figures that she's lying to him again and that she's actually wearing a swimsuit once again. And so, in a brief lack of judgment, he turns around only to be met with the image of her uniform revealing her underwear. How awkward! They end up facing away from each other out of embarrassment. She recovers quickly, as expected, and uses the incident to tease him some more. That is when they notice that it's getting cold and it seems that the rain will not stop anytime soon. 
He suggests that they make a run for it, only for them to realize that Nagatoro's home is closer than his. He doesn't seem bothered by it, but then she teasingly offers that he stay at her house for a while. When they get to her home, his first thought is that her whole family, weirdly enough, even their cat, will bully him the way she does. He stands by the door, imagining different scenarios, until she comes and invites him further inside. She explains that her parents are not home. She lends him some clothes, which are apparently owned by her brother, and after some more teasing, they end up drinking hot beverages in her room. She won't let this opportunity pass, so she makes fun of him by asking what guys do when they are at a girl's place. She starts making provocative statements, which make him increasingly flustered. Turns out, she only means playing video games. While they're playing the game, Nagatoro is pretty confident, but she does not know that he is actually quite good. So when he wins the first round, she is seething. Naoto, on the other hand, wants to use this opportunity to make her pay for making fun of him all the time. However, he underestimated her competitiveness, because right when he is about to win the game, she blows air on him. This startles him so much that she gets the upper hand and she wins the second round. Despite her obvious cheating, the two of them actually had a lot of fun gaming. By the time the rain stops, they agree to play again soon. When it's time for school once more, Naoto finds himself having difficulty finding a seat during lunch. He is resignedly looking around for an empty spot when Nagatoro beckons him to a table with her friends. Seeing as he has no choice, he reluctantly sits down with them. Her friends instantly assume that he's her boyfriend, and rather than denying it, she confirms that they are in a relationship. Her friends immediately start making fun of him, saying that he's acting like a virgin and that he's more like a pet than a boyfriend. Nagatoro begins petting his head, agreeing with their statement despite his embarrassment. The mood shifts, however, when one of her friends tries to pet him as well. She slaps away her hand, claiming that his head is too sticky. Strangely enough, she has an angry look on her face. Hmm, what's with this behavior? When the other one calls him a bug, she becomes angrier. When he notices her behavior, he stands up abruptly and declares that he is not her boyfriend. This does not fix her mood at all. Later on, she demands that he learns to smack someone on the shoulder when they are dissing him. He's reluctant to join her antics at first, but he ends up following her as usual. She starts teasing him about all sorts of things and demanding that he defends himself. When she takes her teasing too far, he snaps and tries to smack her shoulder, only for his arm to collide with her breast. As expected, this results in an afternoon's worth of taunts and jokes. Naoto is washing his hands after he did some oil painting. Suddenly, Nagatoro appears to share the same tap he is using even though there are others. She claims to have spilled some juice and wants to wash her hands as well. At least trying not to think about how weird the situation is, she suddenly blurts out how it looks like they're taking a bath before being intimate. Gosh, this girl is so vulgar. No wonder he's always embarrassed. She takes his hand and starts washing it in a suggestive way that he ends up running away from her. Later on, he's having a peaceful time eating lunch in the art room when he hears the door open. He expects it to be Nagatoro, but it's actually her friends. They start making fun of him and teasing him for being a virgin. They insist that he is a closeted pervert. Why can't they just leave him alone? What's worse is that they force him to touch the other girl's breast. He's so embarrassed, even though it turns out that she just stuffed her uniform with bean buns. Their teasing only ceases when Nagatoro arrives with a menacing expression on her face. Her friends instantly ran out of there. She then sarcastically congratulates him for touching a girl's breast, only for him to explain that what he touched are just bean buns. She laughs so hard when she hears this and teases him relentlessly for it. She then challenges him to a game of guessing the bean bun. She comes up with the most outrageous games. She bribes him into having the rare premium bean bun that he really wants, and all he has to do is feel which bean bun is the premium one. The catch is, is it has to be under her uniform on top of her breasts. Of course, she manages to convince him to do it. However, one of the bean buns falls off, and when he goes on to examine that area, he's touching her actual breast. He's not aware of this, of course, so he goes and squeezes what's in his hand. She ends up smacking him after. Poor guy. A while later, he's in the art room and staring at the baseball team outside. Nagatoro insists on being his model that day, but she's late. Just when he thinks she will not come, she arrives. Strangely enough, she's pushing a large sofa inside claiming that the craft club does not need it anymore and that the chairs in the art room are uncomfortable. She notes that he's looking at the baseball team's star player getting lots of praise. She assumes that he's jealous of him and wants the praise for himself. He answers that he does, but he doesn't have much talent. She then claims that if he wants to be praised, he needs to praise others as well. And that's how he finds himself being forced to praise her. He's careful about what he says to her, so he praises her hair and the lightness of her steps. 
She teases him for his innocent words. When it's her turn to praise him, she makes fun of him even more. He insists that they begin already. However, she starts posing for the drawing in the most sensual way, and he just becomes embarrassed even more. So embarrassed, in fact, that he turns a bright red color. He only gets some peace when she becomes so sleepy that she lies on the couch. She offers him a reward if he draws her well. Soon, she falls asleep. He stares at her peacefully sleeping for a while and smiles to himself. He then begins to draw her in earnest. By the time he's finished, he's created a pretty picture of her. However, he thinks that he's made a lot of mistakes. But before he can finish up, Nagatoro is suddenly behind him, claiming that his time is up. She intends to give him his rewards, but he will not fall for her joke so easily anymore. When he demands he closes his eyes, he does so without expecting much. She still ends up pressing a toy to his lips and makes fun of him. But when she sees the picture of her, she smiles softly and tells him that she likes it. Nagatoro visits Nayato in the art room once again. She begins her daily teasing once again, but something is different. He's ignoring her. She calls him gross over and over to get him to react, but it's not working. Suddenly, her friends come to ask him to hang out with them, rather than with her since she is always calling him gross anyway. To her surprise and utter shock, he actually agrees with them and leaves her behind. She is so horrified by what's happening. Fortunately, that is when she wakes up from her nap in the art room. Nayato is there as well and he looks worried for her. She even notices that he placed a blanket over her. He claims that he didn't want her to catch a cold. His sweet actions make her blush declaring that he is less gross that day. Sometime later, he is so unnerved that she's staring at him intently. He knows that she is going to say something weird again, and he's right. She tells him that she bets he's sensitive, especially since he's a virgin. And so to prove her theory, she chases him around the room to tickle him. She manages to attack him with her tickle, and to no one's surprise, he is, in fact, quite ticklish. When he goes back to his drawing, she shows him a video of a sheep getting its wool sheared off. She finds it thrilling to watch and he agrees that it's satisfying. She then notices that his hair is poofy like a sheep's. She tells him that since his hair has grown so long, she would give him a haircut. He's so horrified when she retrieves a shaver from her bag. She claims that she borrowed it from her brother. He voices his strong opposition to her idea as he backs away from her. She, however, is persistent and convinces him that she would only do the tip. He tells her that a shaver has never been used on him, so she answers that they can use a scissor instead. She claims to have trimmed her brother's hair as well, so it won't be a problem. He reluctantly agrees since he thinks it's not so bad to let her do it. Before she can begin, her phone rings. Her friends are calling her to return her notes to her. She tells him that she'd be right back. What she doesn't know is that her friends actually tricked her. They want to corner Nayato once again and bully him again. They enter the art room and he instantly feels threatened. It becomes even worse when they notice the shaver on the table. Because they have nothing better to do than make fun of the innocent Nayato, they want to shave his head. One of them holds him down even while the other positions the shaver above his head. He continues to struggle against them and although he tells them to stop, they don't listen to him. He declares that he promised Nagatoro that she'll get to trim his hair. Good thing Nagatoro arrives on time and she does not look happy. She's incredibly pissed off at them and her friends know it, so her two friends ran off instantly to get away from her. At the end of the day, she gets to cut his hair after all. When she shows him the result, he actually likes what he sees. He blushes and he thanks her sincerely. She's taken aback and she turns red as well. But she wouldn't be Nagatoro if she didn't get to tease him, so she tells him that having a nice haircut does not diminish his creepiness. On another day, the two of them are struggling on their way home due to the hot weather. She suggests that they get her favorite shaved ice. So she leads him to the store selling it only to be met with disappointment when they see the long line of people waiting to buy it as well. Apparently, the store has recently been featured on TV, which means it got really popular. He tells her that he doesn't mind getting a convenience store ice cream instead, but she is so affronted by the idea that he agrees to line up. They try to wait in line, however, the heat is becoming even more unbearable. She insists on having the willpower to stay in line even though he suggests that they get out of the line to rest. When he notices that she is about to collapse, he grabs her arm and drags her out of there. He takes her to a park so she can sit down. He buys her a bottle of water and her energy returns once she's hydrated, and he looks at her incredulously for recharging so fast. She runs off for a moment, leaving him sitting on the bench. She returns and presses a convenience store ice cream to the back of his neck. He jumps up out of surprise, causing her to laugh at him really hard. She gives him the ice cream as a form of gratitude for what he did for her earlier. On their way home, they talk about what they will be doing during their summer break. He realizes that she would probably stop bothering him during the summer. To his surprise, she wants to exchange contacts so she can message him. 
she starts sending him cutie emojis and teasing him all the way home. Nayato finds himself in an unknown place once he wakes up. A woman claims that he has chosen to be the savior of that world. She says that he has the potential to be a great wizard since he has the unique skill called Virgin for Life. Wow, that's offensive. He thinks so too. His mission is to defeat a demon lord that has been loose in the world. He has no choice but to do these so-called tasks since he is pushed from the sky to fall into an unknown world. He doesn't even know how to use magic, but he manages to use the staff given to him by the mysterious woman. He's able to land safely when the staff glows with his apparent power. It's too late, however, when he realizes that he landed on the back of a giant lizard. He instantly goes running from it as it attempts to attack him. Using the staff is futile since he can't seem to hit it with his magic. That is, when a cat-like girl arrives and saves him. The girl looks exactly like Nagatoro he knows only with cat ears and paws for hands. She claims that her name is Nekatoro. The two of them go on a long adventure to defeat the demon lord. They even had to fight a dragon in tandem. What surprises him is when Nekatoro kisses him on the cheek upon the dragon's defeat, promising that they can keep going as long as they are together. The dragon turns out to be Gamo, a girl that looks like Nagatoro's original friend. He figures that she has been cursed by the demon lord. Yoshi is there as well. Although she hatches from a giant egg? Uh, yeah, it's weird. It's been decided that the four of them will go to the demon lord's castle, but when they arrive, the throne is empty. In a sudden turn of events, his three companions are, in fact, the demon lords. They admit to tricking him. They mock him for being a wimp, and especially Nekatoro. She calls him a fool for thinking that she's in love with him. Fortunately, just as he is screaming out of terror for his situation, he wakes up and everyone in the restaurant is looking at him for acting like that. To make matters worse, Nagatoro is there as well, together with her friends. She approaches him, but he instantly tries to evade her. He hurriedly leaves, but he accidentally leaves his sketchbook behind. Nagatoro picks it up, only to see herself in his drawings as a girl with cat ears. She blushes, but also figures that she can tease him for this. So she runs after him. When he sees her chasing after him and asking if the drawings are his, he bolts. He denies that the notebook is even his. He stops running out of exhaustion, still denying everything. She then declares that the notebook is now hers, even though he tries to stop her. Since it's the summertime, a lot of people are spending their time at the beach, but not Naoto. He actually likes staying in his room with air conditioning. However, his plans change when Nagatoro calls him to invite him to the beach. As usual, she manages to convince him despite his initial reluctance. He really can't say no to her, can he? Well, she can be pretty persistent. And that's how he finds himself going with her along with her not-so-nice friends to the beach. Gamo and Yoshi tease him when he goes all red when they take off their clothes to reveal their bikinis. Her friend's behavior pisses Nagatoro off as well. Naoto becomes so frustrated with them that he leaves to buy some drinks. Later on, while they're having fun swimming, Nagatoro notices how he doesn't seem to want to join in the fun. She obviously becomes worried for him, so Gamo tells her to let him be, since he wants to be a loner. Of course, she doesn't listen and she approaches him while he's sketching. She wants him to go swimming, but he insists that the sunburn will hurt. She tells him not to worry about it since they would put some sunscreen on for him. He's worried that she will drag him to the water if he lets her, so he tells her that she should not do that kind of stuff since they're not dating. She decides to put it on him roughly using her foot, so he had to suffer while she rubs sunscreen on him while on his stomach. It gets worse when her friends join in despite Nagatoro's verbal protests. Moments later, Nagatoro forces him to the water to swim with them. Surprisingly enough, he seems to enjoy himself despite their constant teasing. Later on, when he's watching them play volleyball, he notes how energetic they are. He's even more fascinated by how happy Nagatoro is. By the end of the day, while he's talking to Nagatoro on the phone, he looks at the stunning sketch he's made of her on the beach. It's time for the festival and Naoto thinks that Nagatoro will invite him to go with her. He can't keep the thought out of his mind, especially since it's almost time for the celebration, but not once did she call him. He even thinks about inviting her himself, but he strongly opposes his own idea. Why would he even do such a thing? But then he still finds himself going to the festival. He convinces himself that it's only because he's bored. However, deep inside, he is actually expecting to bump into Nagatoro. Unfortunately for him, he encounters Gamo and Yoshi instead. They chase after him and even put a collar on him so he won't get away. What's worse is they sent a picture of him to Nagatoro, who is apparently busy with her swim club activities. He did not expect her to arrive since she was so busy, but how wrong he was. As her friends expected, Nagatoro comes rushing to them to get Naoto. She demands that they give him to her, but they insist that she fights for him. Nagatoro accepts her challenge, even though she denies that he cares about her senpai. 
only that she won't back down from a challenge. They get the most prizes in the various games around the festival, and so Nagatoro and Naoto team up against Gamo and Yoshi. In the shooting gallery, the two of them are having a conversation while they try to win as many prizes as they can. Nagatoro assumes that he is waiting for her to invite him, and he is quick to deny her accusation. However, to his surprise, she tells him while blushing that if he has somewhere he wants to go with someone, he should try asking that person. Hmm, what are you implying exactly, Nagatoro? By the end of their little competition, Nagatoro and Naoto are able to win a rare stuffed animal that Yoshi's been collecting. She manages to bribe her friend into letting her win. Gamo has no choice but to relinquish her hold on Naoto's collar. Nagatoro frees him from it while her friends bid them farewell. The two are left awkwardly standing next to each other when they realize that they're finally alone. She sheepishly suggests that they look around since they're already there. He agrees with her suggestion even though he is embarrassed. The two are walking around while eating snacks and he can't help but think that it looks like they're on a date. She's quick to voice his thoughts out loud. However, he mocks him by saying that she won't actually date him. She challenges him to hold her hand to make it seem like a real date. She's looking at him mockingly while he feels his hand twitch. But before he can actually do anything, the fireworks start. Nagatoro is so excited to see it that he pushes him insistently to the viewing area. Unfortunately, they are met with so many people lining up that it seems impossible for them to actually see it. Suddenly, remembering a place in the woods where he watched the fireworks before, when he's about to tell her about it, the people in the line move and she gets separated from him. She gets squeezed between the people in the line that he has to grab her arm to get her out. She blushes as he drags her to a dark area. But, of course, she doesn't miss the opportunity to tease him about his intention of bringing her somewhere quiet. Her mocking ceases, however, when she sees how amazing the fireworks are in that area. Moments later, she's back to her playful mood as she implies that he intends to do something sleazy by bringing her there. He, on the other hand, wants to embarrass her as well, so he asks her for specific details about what exactly she's talking about. She stammers and tries not to say the explicit details, but he did not expect her to actually blurt out that he probably wants to forcefully kiss her. He immediately starts denying it. Their seemingly endless banter is interrupted when they notice that they are, in fact, surrounded by various couples kissing in the dark. The two of them ran away in terror, on their way home, she expresses how much she wishes that she had worn her yukata. After a moment of thought, he tells her that perhaps they can come back next year. She agrees and starts teasing him about wearing matching yukatas for the event. When the start of the new term comes, Naoto is coming home one afternoon feeling tired. He comes across Nagatoro with her friends. He observes them behind a tree and realizes just how different their worlds are from each other. His insecurities become even more apparent when two guys arrive, intending to hang out with them. He is outraged to hear that one of them is forcibly convincing Nagatoro to hang out with him, even going as far as putting his hands around her shoulder. Nagatoro removes his arm and is obviously against the idea. Even though he doesn't know what on earth he's doing, he panics when they actually notice his presence. When he's in front of them, he tries his best to calm himself even though it's hardly working. He forces himself to tell Nagatoro that it's time for them to go home. Despite his awkwardness, Nagatoro actually smiles at him warmly, and to his relief, she agrees with him. The rest of her friends actually follow suit, leaving behind the arrogant guys. Serves them right. Nagatoro is commenting about how flimsy and thin he is. She even concludes that it's the reason why girls tend to push him around. He pitifully agrees that he's a bean sprout but she insists that he should do some muscle training. Naoto, however, is adamant about his refusal. He tells her that it's too much work and that he'd rather do something that does not require moving. She then has a brilliant idea and forces him to get to the ground on all fours. At first, he's confused, but then she suddenly sits on his back. He has no choice but to stay put and carry her weight. She insists that this is a kind of muscle training and refuses to get off. However, they're both horrified when they see two of their schoolmates witnessing their awkward position. Perhaps they will now learn the usefulness of closing the door. Later on, Naoto is struggling with the fact that he hasn't done much studying for their upcoming exam. A new video game has just come out and he couldn't help but spend the time he's supposed to spend on studying on gaming instead. Nagatoro figures out his dilemma easily enough and is quick to remind him that if he so much as fails, he will have to repeat his second year, which means that he will be in the same class as her. She gives him all sorts of embarrassing scenarios that will likely happen to him once they become classmates. He will have to deal with a lot more of her teasing if they are in the same class. She even calls him ex-senpai to nail down her point. She's laughing at his future misfortune hysterically when he, out of nowhere, says that at least it won't be boring with her around. When the two of them realize what he said, they end up looking like ripe tomatoes. 
As usual, Nagatoro berates him for being creepy. Later on, while Nagatoro and her friends are watching him study, they make him worry even more when they tell him that he is likely to repeat a year. He'll probably repeat a third one, which means that they will be his upper class. Naoto can only imagine just how horrible it is for him if this is to happen. They will probably order him around and make him do uncomfortable things. All his worrying is for nothing after all since he manages to do well in his exams. Her confusing feelings are showing even more. While she's walking down the hall, she overhears people in the art room having a conversation. Naoto and her friends are inside, and they're talking about something suspiciously provocative. What she hears makes her blush so hard and angry at the same time, thinking that they are doing something sexual inside. She furiously opens the door only to find that they are merely helping him remove a splinter. She angrily marches towards them and removes the splinter herself. Poor Naoto. Her attitude is still off when they are making their way home. She's talking sarcastically about him being nice to cute girls and carrying their stuff for them. She recalls how he carried the stuff a girl was carrying. He reasons that anyone would help if someone is in need. When she tells him that he should carry her bag as well, he merely asks her why he should. His answers only frustrate her more. She then declares that they play rock, paper, scissors, and whoever wins will have to carry the other's bag up three ways ahead. As usual, he's forced to go along with her. However, things do not go as planned when she loses to him. She has to carry his bag instead, much to her frustration. Her foul mood is so evident that he feels guilty for her misfortune. So, for the next round that she insists on having, he makes sure to lose so he won't get in trouble for winning twice. He regrets doing so instantly when she starts acting smugly for winning. When they are almost home, he expects her to stop the game. However, she wants to play a final round. She wins once again, but Naoto is surprised when she refuses to give him her bag. Instead, she jumps on his back, demanding that he carries her. He worries that someone will see them, but she is confident that no one is around. So, he has no choice but to carry her, even though he's struggling. Of course, Nagatoro takes this opportunity to tease him. Moments later, he feels his grip faltering, and he worries about dropping her. He shifts his grip on her to prevent this from happening. However, the most embarrassing thing happens. He accidentally touches her under her skirt. His touch makes her jerk away from him, and he instantly tries to apologize. She's so embarrassed that she runs away to the other direction. Naoto is left to worry that he upset her because of what happened. At home, Nagatoro begins texting him while he's doing his homework. She wants him to guess what she's doing at the moment. He answers that she's probably doing normal things like watching TV. But how wrong he is. She calls him to inform him that she is, in fact, taking a bath. He is so shocked that his things end up scattering to the floor. Hearing his reaction causes her to laugh hysterically that she doesn't even notice that she accidentally clicked on the video call option. Naoto is horrified and beyond embarrassed seeing her naked from the shoulders up. By the time she realizes her mistake, it's too late since she's already cringing in embarrassment. The two of them are as red as tomatoes by the end of the episode. Nagatoro is bothering him again in the art room. She's shadow boxing around the room. She tells him that she's been hooked on boxing ever since he showed her a certain show. She then has an idea that Naoto knows won't be good for him, based on her evil expression. She wants him to spar with her. He tries to reason with her, but as usual, he goes along with her quirk. He reminds her that boxers are not supposed to hit anyone outside the ring. She then begins using him as a punching bag, taunting him to hit her back. He's having such a hard time evading her hits that he loses his balance and ends up leaning his whole body into hers. He instantly apologizes for invading her space, but she tells him that of course he will do a clinch move on her. Later on, she discusses her sparring session with her friends. She recalls that him doing the clinch is creepy of him despite it being a legitimate boxing move. Her friends are beginning to take interest in sparring with Naoto. Nagataro is obviously against the idea. She declares that one is not allowed to hit anyone outside the ring. Gamo questions her, but she tells her that she can hold back. When Gamo replies that she can as well, the two have an intense staring session. Realizing that they can't be deterred from the idea, she rushes to Naoto to tell him to run away. But her friends are right behind her, asking him to spar with them. She tells him that she will handle it, intending to fight Gamo so she will not force him. He observes that she is such a badass, but he knows that it's probably her fault that they want to spar with him in the first place. Later on, he's in desperate need of his oasis, aka the art room, for some peace. But as usual, his luck is non-existent. The art room is currently occupied by Nagatoro and her friends. They're making some silly art and making lots of noise. He tries to calm down and takes a seat in front of a canvas. They tell him that they usually hang out at the dining hall, but a bunch of gaming guys are causing a lot of noise there. He expresses his surprise at them giving up so easily. 
He thinks that they would have dealt with them. An evil aura suddenly descends on the girls. They tell him that they sent Sakura, one of their friends, to flirt with each of the guys in that group. This will cause a rift between their friendship and soon that group will implode. They declare that men are always at the mercy of their horniness. He tells himself that he should not find himself on their bad side. Before he can go back to drawing, the girls suddenly begin talking about whether or not he is horny. Gamo and Yoshi insist that he is a herbivore and that his libido is non-existent. Nagatoro tells them that he is horny indeed. To demonstrate, she teases him by saying that she will kiss him, only to laugh at his face when he turns red. He's forced to listen to them continue on with their argument. Nagatoro announces that he is a closeted perv while Gamo explains that he is acting like a virgin instead. The discussion becomes so intense that they end up having a bet. Nagatoro bets that she can find a dirty book in the art room. Gamo is quick to rise up to the challenge since she is pretty confident that she will not find anything. They watch Nagatoro look for any dirty book. She becomes increasingly frustrated especially since her friends are telling her she's wasting her time. Naoto is indeed keeping a dirty book, but he's reading it for the art style. However, he's keeping it in the next room. Seeing her struggling to win the bet makes him decide to retrieve it himself. When he returns, he discreetly places the book on the bookshelf behind him. He then makes sure to act suspicious and declares loudly that she'll never find one in there. She notices that he's hiding something behind him and she easily finds the dirty book. Her joy in finding it is so evident as she hits him playfully over and over again. Another day came with Naoto hanging out in the art room. Nagatoro enters later on with her usual cheerful disposition. He instantly notices her new earring, and she asks him what he thinks about it. With a blushing face and eyes that can't meet hers, he compliments that it looks good. She then tells him how she pierced her ears herself. He remarks how painful that must be, but she assures him that it's not. That's when he gets another evil idea. She wants to pierce his ear as well. He instantly refuses her idea, but as usual, he is bound to give in. At this point, he should have expected it to be a prank, for she merely pinches his ear when he is bracing himself for the pain. Their banter is interrupted when a crying Sakura enters the room asking Naoto for help. He accompanies the girls to a restaurant to discuss the fact that Sakura has a stalker. She's crying the whole time since she's so scared. The fact that the man is still outside the restaurant at that moment makes it worse. Sakura then has an idea to escape her stalker. She asks Naoto to pretend to be her boyfriend. Nagatoro does not react well upon hearing this. She tries to tell her friend that he's too creepy to be her pretend boyfriend and he'll probably become another one of her stalkers. Naoto defends himself, saying that he'll never do such a thing. Sakura then asks him again to agree. Despite the dark aura that's settled around Nagatoro, he still reluctantly agrees to help Sakura. They agree to have a fake date. Naoto is already regretting his decision before it has even started. When Sakura arrives, he feels awkward like he usually does. He becomes even more nervous when she tells him that she'll take the lead, which means that they have to flirt for real. Meanwhile, Nagatoro and her other friends are following right behind them, and Nagatoro does not look happy at all. Gamo takes note of this and takes the opportunity to make fun of her. While the fake couple are walking, she and Yoshi begin talking about the possibilities of the two developing true feelings for one another and becoming a real couple. This enrages Nagatoro even more. The fake couple reaches the area by the sea. Naoto wonders why he hasn't seen the stalker. At that instant, Nagatoro appears dragging the stalker along. In a rage, she apprehended the stalker herself to stop the date. Gamo and Yoshi are disappointed that she ruined everything, but she pays them no mind. She merely tells her senpai that they should head home. On the way, her mood seems to have recovered, and she begins teasing him once again. Naoto lucked out once again during a mandatory race for the second year. To make matters worse, Nagatoro and her friends see his admittedly pathetic display. Her friends, as expected, start making fun of his lack of energy and the fact that he is obviously a lap behind than his classmates. Nagatoro, on the other hand, seems to be thinking deeply while looking at her senpai. On his way home at the end of the day, Nagatoro catches up with him again and has to compete with her. The group is in the art room once again and Nagatoro is making fun of how Shakespeare, Naoto's club president, speaks. He tells them to stop making fun of her and Nagatoro is not happy that he's still defending her. He tells them to remember whose fault it is that he's in this situation. Nagatoro and her friends assure him that he is not alone in this. They suggest that they can do a cat cafe to lure people in. Naoto is frustrated and tells them how they don't understand how great of an artist the president is. He starts listing her qualities and declares that she is the greatest woman there is. Nagatoro does not seem happy to hear this from him, especially since he shows them one of the reasons she is so popular. It's a painting of herself in the nude, but only showing her back. 
The girls are shocked to see the president's so-called vision. Nagatoro is outraged that he's been keeping that painting this entire time and demands to know what he thinks about the painting. I sense some jealousy around here. He explains that it's a work of art and that the president's work is always amazing. She insists that he probably thinks that the painting is amazingly lewd which he strongly denies. Amo suggests that he has to make something equally amazing to beat her, and Nagatoro enthusiastically tells him that she'll model for him if he begs, but he tells them it's useless because he's not as talented as her. Gamo then mentions something that dismays Nagatoro. Her friend begins by mentioning how the club president has all the right curves while Nagatoro is just cute and pocket-sized. With the president's body, she's most likely to win over the population. Naoto, on the other hand, can't take listening to them diss her, so he raises his voice to defend her, saying that he will never think less of Nagatoro and that she has her own charms as well. His statement makes her blush for a second, but she instantly recovers to brag to her friends. In the end, they come up with the idea of him drawing cosplay since he will never agree on drawing nudes. He will have to do his best since his club is at stake. On their way home, he is leisurely sketching her from the back. She tells him that drawing her like that is too boring, and it may not be enough. He tells her that everyday things can be special too. This makes her smile, and she vows to help him win no matter what. And that is what she did. She tries on different outfits for him to draw from her swimsuit to only wearing a bedsheet, all so he can find inspiration to draw. The problem is, he's struggling especially with the nagging thought in his mind that he's not good enough. The other girls arrive and seeing Nagatoro wearing only a sheet, begin teasing her. All of a sudden, Naoto says that he prefers her the way she normally looks, but he's still so confused. She tells her that he doesn't want to involve her anymore since he doesn't want to embarrass her if she loses. She tries to reassure him, but he exclaims that the whole thing is just between him and the president. She becomes upset with him and she runs out of the room, yelling that maybe he should get the president to model for him instead, since he talks about it all the time. Later on, the club president comes to him in the art room while only wearing a sheet. Apparently, she's been taking some sample photos for her art. She looks at the painting he's been working on and comments that it lacks love. He's dismayed by what she is talking about but is forced to listen. However, to his horror, Nagatoro peeks through the door only to see them together. She becomes visibly upset even though he tries to explain himself. His club president tells him to chase after his muse and so he does. Nakatoro is so incensed that he has to chase her to the swimming pool area. She gets so distracted by their argument that she almost falls off if not for him catching her arm. He tells her that she's the only one he wants to draw. He confesses that he doesn't want her to change and that he likes her the way she is. The two of them end up resembling a tomato because of this. She gets so flustered that she jerks her arm so they end up both falling into the pool. He finally completes the lineup and he shows it to the girls. The painting ends up looking amazing and it features Nagatoro doing ordinary things from eating to walking. They're amazed by his creation. He explains the theme is probably the day in the life of Nagatoro, but Gamo exclaims that it's more like a boyfriend's perspective. Of course, they wouldn't miss an opportunity to tease him. Later on, the girls decide to get some intel on the president's painting by sneaking into her workspace. Nagatoro wants him to join them, but he declines, since he doesn't want to be demoralized by seeing her amazing work. She assures him that they will do great, especially since she's the best model there is. Naoto can't help but admire her confidence. However, her confidence is quickly annihilated when she sees the painting the club president has done. The queen of lewd, indeed as they call her, she certainly proves this especially since Nagatoro faints from seeing her paintings. She comes back with zero confidence and is entirely sure that they will lose. The other girls, however, are eager to help and are coming up with a strategy. Apparently, they intend to use Nagatoro's other talents. He doesn't really know what they mean by that until the actual festival arrives. In order to get people to see his exhibit, the girls make Nagatoro wear the cat costume, while Yoshi and Sakura wear cat mascots. They made Nagatoro viral prior to the exhibit and are not using her popularity as the so-called Toro cat to lure people in. He can't help but feel grateful for them, especially Nagatoro, because even though the president is still getting more people, he's actually faring well. However, his mood changes when he notices how much attention Nagatoro is getting from all the guys, especially since she's tapping their heads like she usually does to him. She's also quite upset when she sees a couple of girls approach him about his art. They're gushing about how amazing he is, and he's becoming increasingly flustered. Gamo tells the two of them to get lunch, and Naoto asks her if she wants to grab lunch with him. Nagatoro blushes delicately as she agrees. While they are walking, she tells him to not let the popularity get to his head, because he's still creepy. At this point, I think it's jealousy talking. He tells her that getting appreciation from his work is great, 
but he would never have been able to make his paintings if not for her. He tells her how grateful he is for her. The things he's saying is making her flustered even though she tries to keep her usual expression, so she reverts to her methods of calling him a creep. When they get back, they're surprised to see the student council confiscating the club president's artwork. They deem it too inappropriate, and the president is protesting for her freedom of expression. Naoto can't help but try to defend her, and Nagataro and her friends join in too. At the end, the council gives in and lets her continue. However, due to her being almost disqualified, the clear winner of the competition becomes Naoto. After the festival, she takes a look at his work and tells him and Nagatoro that his work not only has passion, but it also has love. The two of them are shocked with what they hear, especially Naoto. The president questions him if he thinks he is not in love, and Nagatoro demands that he answer. Before he can do so, there is an announcement about the start of the festival concert. He bashfully asks Nagataro if she wants to go with him to the concert. Her answer is clear when she grabs his hand and drags him along. Naoto, Nagataro, and their friends make their way to the concert together in a gleeful spirit. The new season began with the president of the student council scolding his secretary for doing a poor job on her assigned task. One morning, as she was running late for her class, she passed by the president who was taking a test and caught him cheating so she then took a picture of the action. The president then asked her to keep it a secret between them, to which the secretary agreed upon the condition that he must do everything she says, thus giving the secretary the opportunity to tease the president and have him under her control. It turned out that that scene was from a manga that our protagonist, Naoto Hachioji, who was referred to as Senpai, was reading in the art club room. He related his situation with the president from the mangas. there was also someone that always put him in the same situation. As he continued his thoughts about the girl that was similar to the secretary from the manga, the door burst open with our other protagonist, who's none other than Nagatoro, bragging about her new shoes to her senpai. Senpai immediately hid the manga, but Nagatoro suspected that he was hiding something, so she searched him and successfully found the manga. Upon seeing it, she revealed that she also read the manga and teased senpai that he was like the guy in the manga. But Senpai rebuted her statement that the president's situation is nothing compared to someone's bullying, indirectly referring to Nagatoro. Offended by his reply, she then challenged him to do one of the scenes in the manga. Nagatoro then showed the latest chapter of the manga to him where the secretary poured water on her shoes and made the president lick it. After witnessing the scene, Senpai was horrified, and it intensified when Nagatoro wanted him to do the same thing while holding a bottle of water ready to pour on her shoes. Not wanting to do the same thing from the manga, Senpai stopped her but ended up hitting the bottle and droplets of water directly hit Nagatoro's shoes. Senpai then kneeled down facing Nagatoro's shoes. Meanwhile, Nagatoro was flustered with the idea that Senpai would lick her shoes but turned out that Senpai just wiped off the water from her shoes with his handkerchief. Got yourself so high, huh, Nagatoro? The following morning when going to school, Senpai spotted Nagatoro walking in front of him. He contemplated how to approach her and as he neared her, he was about to get her attention, he quickly backed out. While thinking about how to deal with the situation, he was surprised by Nagatoro's presence that appeared behind him. She then accused him of being a stalker, but he explained himself that he was just confused about how to greet and approach her upon seeing her walking before him. After hearing his reason, Nagatoro then taught him various ways of greeting and approaching someone. However, it consisted of painful patting on the back of his head, poking his cheek, pricking from behind, kicking his butt, and finally what she called the ultimate greeting which was hugging him from behind. It led to an awkward situation for him as he could feel Nagatoro's bosom pressing against his back. What a great morning for our senpai. After her mission of showing her own ways of greeting, she challenged him to do the same, but the latter firmly refused to do it. Later, as they continued walking to school with senpai walking behind Nagatoro, senpai wondered what Nagatoro's initial reaction would be if he tried doing the different ways of greetings that she learned from her, especially the last one which was hugging from behind. He pictured out the scenario in his head, but immediately brushed it off. As he spaced out from the idea, he tripped on the road and ended up falling and hugging her from behind, which made him hold onto her breast in the process. Nagatoro was totally taken aback by their situation, so she kicked him off hard with her back when Yoshi and Gamo appeared. Seeing Senpai about to fall, Yoshi then kicked him back to Nagatoro. After that, they greeted each other normally, but just raising their hands while saying a greeting which made Senpai realize that Nagatoro was just messing with him about the way of greetings she taught him earlier. Nagatoro's friends then reminded her about the after party of the culture festival they had after their class, and Nagatoro invited Senpai to join them. As usual, Senpai and Nagatoro were in the art club room. As Senpai was drawing on his canvas, Nagatoro complained about the unusual coldness in the room, 
to which Senpai explained that it was due to the aircon being broken. Nagatoro then showed him the new stockings she had just bought for the winter. Senpai then thought of not seeing Nagatoro's bare legs anymore when she would start wearing stockings and let out a sigh and unconsciously commented out loud that it's an unavoidable situation. His reaction didn't go unnoticed with Nagatoro, so she teased Senpai that he was obsessed with her legs, to which he strongly denied. So Nagatoro challenged him to help her wear the stockings on her legs. Trapped by the situation, Senpai started putting the stockings on Nagatoro's feet. As he ascended to her inner thighs, Nagatoro flustered and freaked out, making her close both of her legs and trapping Senpai's hands in between her inner thighs. Oopsies. After Nagatoro continued wearing her stockings by herself, she asked for Senpai's opinion about it, to which he replied that it suited her. Nagatoro, being herself, teased Senpai if he has a fetish for stockings and was about to tease him more, but her phone rang and it was Gamo-chan, telling that she was done with her work. So it's time for them to go to their planned after party at the Sushi Family Restaurant. In the restaurant, together with Senpai and Nagatoro, were Gamachan, Sakura, and Yoshi. After some time of eating, the three friends of Nagatoro showed their appreciation and congratulated Senpai for his big contributions during the cultural festival. They gave him a sushi that they customized from different sushis they ordered. Senpai tasted it all and said that it turned out to be so delicious. Of course, Nagatoro wouldn't let the opportunity slide and also made a special customized sushi for Senpai which turned out to be a weird one. But still, Senpai ate it and surprisingly found it so delicious, which made Nagatoro flustered. But she just teased Senpai out of her way from the awkward situation they were put in. All of them then continued to have fun at the restaurant. In the art club, Nagatoro was eating snacks. And when Senpai asked her about the snacks she was eating, she decided to share them with him by shooting them directly into his mouth. So sadistic of Nagatoro, as always. When Senpai was alone in the art club practicing his sketching, the art club president checked on his drawing and pointed out that his work had been slacking off, probably due to the burnout from the cultural festival. So he gave him a ticket admission for a zoo and told him that it's a good opportunity for him to refresh, and added that he should invite Nagatoro to the zoo with him, and they could do sketches while at the zoo. As Bucho left the room, Nagatoro arrived in the club room and overheard some parts of their conversation about the zoo. But as she entered the room, she pretended that she heard nothing and acted like usual while sitting on the couch. Senpai was having his internal conflicts on how he would invite Nagatoro to go with him to the zoo. After asking her leading questions, he finally mustered up the courage to invite her. Nagatoro excitedly accepted. That weekend, they met at the zoo, and Senpai gave Nagatoro a sketchbook, which surprised her since she didn't expect that she would be drawing with him on their date. Starting their tour at the zoo, Nagatoro was beaming with excitement upon seeing a little panda standing up and called for Senpai's attention but was disappointed upon seeing him so engrossed with drawing in his sketchbook. Senpai then apologized to her and offered that she can just tour around the zoo without him holding her back. Nagatoro refused it and told him that she would also be sketching with him in exchange and he would teach her how to do it. They started first by sketching the little panda that Nagatoro was so happy about earlier. Nagatoro was having a hard time sketching since it's not her expertise, so she told Senpai to teach her hand in hand on how to sketch. Despite some feeling of awkwardness, Senpai took her hand and guided it on how to draw while Nagatoro kept on teasing him. Later, they took a break at a cafe and showed each other sketches. Nagatoro couldn't help herself but commented that her drawing was far compared to Senpai's that looked so realistic. But Senpai reassured her that she did great for someone as a beginner. When Nagatoro excused herself to go to the restroom, Senpai was approached by his schoolmate with his girlfriend. When the couple noticed the two drawings and commented how lame it is to do drawing in the zoo, Senpai was just holding his patience not to get annoyed by the two until they criticized Nagatoro's drawing. It was then that he snapped and lost his temper, and he angrily told them that they shouldn't make fun of others' effort. Way to go, Senpai! Don't let others mock Nagatoro's effort. Right at that moment, Nagatoro arrived, scaring the two, and was even horrified upon learning that the drawing they mocked was hers. She made them apologize to Senpai, to which they obliged, and then left. Senpai then thanked Nagatoro, but the latter just playfully teased him. However, deep inside Nagatoro, she appreciated how Senpai stood up for her about her drawing. To end their day at the zoo, Senpai suggested that they would draw Nagatoro's favorite animal. Nagatoro then chose a sloth, and as both of them started sketching, Nagatoro positioned herself behind Senpai. Moments after, they finished both of their sketches and revealed each other's work. Nagatoro revealed that instead of the sloth, she drew Senpai, saying that he's just like a human version of a sloth. Well, she has a point. Senpai is an adorable sloth, though. Senpai was annoyed at first that Nagatoro found a way to tease him, but as she carefully looked at the drawing, 
he realized how it was carefully drawn. He then remembered the art club president's advice to him that the most important thing to make art great was love. He immediately shook off the idea, but it bugged him. Seeing him so focused on the drawing, Nagatoro teased him that he was a creep and kept on teasing him along their way home. While in the art club room, Nagatoro received a message from Sakura, so she told Senpai that she would be having a girl's talk with her friends. However, after Nagatoro exited the room, Senpai noticed that she left her phone, he contemplated whether to just wait for her to come back and get the phone, or he would personally give it to her. Upon deciding to choose the latter option, he found his way to the first year student's floor, and felt how awkward it is for him to be there since he's already a second year student. He then realized that he didn't know where Nagatoro's classroom was. Thankfully, there was a student that saw him and asked who he was looking for. He then asked about Nagatoro, but the student didn't recognize Nagatoro's identity based on her surname, so she asked what her first name was. However, Senpai didn't know Nagatoro's first name, and he only knew her by her family name, Nagatoro. But he remembered Gamochan calling her by the nickname Hayachi, so that's what he told the student helping him. Thankfully, the student recognized Nagatoro's nickname and pointed the location of Nagatoro's classroom to him. Checking Nagatoro's classroom, he stumbled upon Gamochan and Yoshi. He didn't want to be seen by the two, so he decided to hide in one of the lockers inside the classroom. Just as he settled himself in the locker, he saw and heard Nagatoro entering the classroom, where Sakura and her other two classmates were waiting for her. The girls discussed one of them being in a relationship with a guy from the baseball team. Since they talked about guys, they shared what type of guys they liked. And when it was Nagatoro's turn, she expressed her type as someone who's fun to be with. Meanwhile, Senpai, who was hiding in the locker, pondered all of the fun moments he had with Nagatoro. Suddenly, Nagatoro realized that her phone was not with her. Sakura then suggested that she might have left it in the art club room. This led them to question Nagatoro if the reason she frequented the club room was because of a guy. This made Nagatoro flustered and caused Senpai to panic thus making a noise in the locker. Not a lucky day for you, senpai. The noise from the locker didn't go unnoticed by the girls, so Nagatoro went to check it. Upon opening it, she was welcomed by the sight of senpai, who was like someone that got caught doing some crime. She then asked him why he was in such a situation, but he just gave her the phone she had left, thinking that it could explain everything. Nagatoro then quickly found a way to get senpai out of the closet by distracting her friends and quickly grabbing senpai out of the locker. Outside the classroom, Nagatoro teased him for being a locker freak, but she then thanked him for bringing her her phone. Nagatoro then awkwardly asked him if he had heard anything earlier, but Senpai acted so innocently about what she was talking about, then ran off, leaving her blushing. At night, Senpai is preparing himself for the upcoming school marathon, causing him to trip on his ankle. Despite it, he still participated in the marathon the next day. While he was running alone, Nagatoro, together with Gamochan, Sakura, and Yoshi approached him and invited him for a race, but Senpai declined, wanting to run at his own pace. As the girls kept persuading Senpai to win the race, the president of the art club, dressed as a bunny, ran past him. They were challenged upon seeing the president, so they decided to make Senpai compete with her and make him win. The girls supported Senpai by giving all of their strength, pushing him and boosting his speed. However, when they reached a crossroad, Senpai and Nagatoro were separated due to the traffic light. The girls then told both of them to continue the race and that they would eventually catch up to them. And so, Senpai and Nagatoro continued running. As they ran together, Nagatoro complimented Senpai's perseverance, but also teased them along the way. Suddenly, Senpai halted as she felt the pain in his sprained ankle. Nagatoro then decided to help him continue the run by carrying some of his weight on her shoulder. As they continued walking, Nagatoro noticed that Senpai was in so much pain with his ankle, so she offered that she would carry him on her back. Senpai initially refused her offer, but Nagatoro insisted, so Senpai was left with no choice and hopped on Nagatoro's back. Well, Nagatoro does know how to be kind to Senpai. As they continued the marathon with Nagatoro carrying Senpai on her back, Senpai was feeling embarrassed and sorry for Nagatoro and then he noticed that she was losing her energy already, so he ordered her to let him down. But Nagatoro didn't want to waver and give up. But just on time, Gamochan, Yoshi, and Sakura caught up with them, and so the four girls carried Senpai. With all of their efforts, they managed to get past the president they were trying to win against. But just as they were close to the finish line, they got disqualified, and the president won against them. Oh, efforts wasted, but at least they had fun. Alone in the club room, Senpai wondered why he hadn't heard anything from Nagatoro and why she didn't come to the club room. So when he bumped into Gamochan and Yoshi on his way home, he inquired about Nagatoro. They revealed that Nagatoro just had a cold 
and that she was already recovering. They then asked him if he knew Nagatoro's house, to which he affirmed, so they requested him to give the lecture printouts that should be given to Nagatoro. Senpai arrived at Nagatoro's house and even brought a present for her. When he entered the gate of Nagatoro's house and tried to get a peek inside, Nagatoro's elder sister, Mizaki, caught him and mistakenly thought of him as some kind of stalker. After finding out that he was the senpai her little sister had talked about, Mizaki then let senpai into the house and offered him some snacks and drinks. As they talked about Nagatoro, Mizaki offered Senpai to tell him anything about her sister. And just as he was about to ask something, Nagatoro appeared in her pajamas. That's a cute and homey Nagatoro there. Nagatoro was totally surprised and embarrassed upon seeing Senpai at their house, so she rushed back to her room, changed, and made herself presentable. After Nagatoro came back to them, her sister turned the pudding that Senpai had brought into a special dessert. While the three of them settled at the table to feast on their desserts, Miyazaki continued to tease Senpai, making Nagatoro bring Senpai to her room to avoid her prying sister. In Nagatoro's room, both of them were having an awkward atmosphere while eating their pudding when Senpai apologized for the sudden visit, but Nagatoro brushed it off and rather thanked him. As they were eating, Nagatoro was back to her usual self and teased Senpai by trying to feed him her pudding. As Nagatoro's spoon neared Senpai's mouth, the door suddenly burst open, revealing Miyazaki bringing them drinks that interrupted and surprised the two. Before Miyazaki left the two in the room, she reminded Senpai about the thing they discussed earlier. Just as she left the room, tension was building between Senpai and Nagatoro due to what Miyazaki told. But Senpai composed himself well and finished his pudding and was about to excuse himself to go home when Nagatoro stopped him and invited him to play video games with her. In the middle of their battle in the video game, Nagatoro questioned Senpai about what he and her older sister had discussed, and further pushed her questioning if he would ask her sister some secrets about her. Senpai denied her accusation and said that he wasn't the type of person to pry into someone's privacy. After losing another round of their game to Nagatoro, she challenged Senpai that if he would win the next round, she would reveal one of her secrets to which Senpai accepted. As they started another round, Nagatoro teased Senpai about the things he wanted to ask her. Nagatoro kept on pushing him to answer her until Senpai told her that he just wanted to know her first name. It's a common thing for Japanese people to address each other by their surname or family name, and calling someone with their given name or first name means that you have a close relationship. So calling someone by their first name in Japan is a big deal. Nagatoro was then taken aback by Senpai's response and realized that she hadn't told him her first name yet. So she explained that she could just tell him her name anytime. But Nagatoro being herself, she took it as an opportunity and teased Senpai again by making a big deal of Senpai wanting to know her name. Just as they were quarreling about it, the video game announced the end of their round and it was Senpai who won. So to fulfill their deal, Nagatoro decided to tell Senpai her first name. She was close to telling it when Senpai interrupted her and said that it's fine, and he didn't need to know her first name, and continued that he felt like it didn't feel right to ask her such a thing over a game or a bet, then added that he should wait until he would learn her first name one day at the right time. Just then, as they agreed on it, Miyazaki barged into the room, calling Nagatoro by her first name, which was Hayasi making Senpai learn that Hayasi was Nagatoro's first name. Nagatoro was so annoyed with her sister and shoved her out of her room. But Misaki insisted on showing the photo album she was bringing, which consisted of different pictures of Nagatoro's life, to Senpai. But Nagatoro angrily stopped her from doing so. It was time for Senpai to go home, and Nagatoro saw him off and thanked him for visiting her. She then reminded him that she would see him tomorrow at school and tease him. As Senpai walked home, he recalled Nagatoro's first name while having a smile plastered on his face. As Senpai and Nagatoro walked together to school, Nagatoro greeted Senpai first, and when Senpai greeted back, he contemplated on how he would address Nagatoro. After pondering on what would be Nagatoro's reaction if he would address her with her first name, he decided to just call her the usual way he addressed her. While Senpai was walking in front of Nagatoro, she suddenly held the end of his shirt sleeves, surprising him but it was just Nagatoro's way of teasing him. After that, Nagatoro showed him her phone with an article about ranking moves that girls could use to make boys feel excited. She demonstrated the three moves, which were flipping hair, looking at him from below, and lastly, pulling the end of his sleeves. However, Senpai brushed it off and said that it didn't excite him, which prompted Nagatoro to do the last move again and again to prove him wrong. Senpai was annoyed by it, so to make Nagatoro stop, he decided to grab Nagatoro's sleeves 
When Senpai made a move to grab Nagatoro's sleeve, his timing was off, making him grab and hold Nagatoro's hands instead, and they ended up with both of their hands clasped together. Both of them were shocked by how their hands held each other. Gamochan, Yoshi, and Sakura appeared. Seeing Nagatoro and Senpai holding each other's hands, the three teased him, but then Nagatoro denied it and explained that they were just practicing some judo techniques and moves, as she tried to execute one of the moves. That's a smooth one there. The next morning, Senpai woke up and found himself coughing so hard and having a cold, so he decided to excuse himself from attending school. He was left alone in the house since his mother had a business trip. Although his mother offered to cancel her business trip to take care of him, he replied that she didn't need to do that, and he could handle himself, and that his cold was just nothing. Senpai entertained himself by watching television and reading a book, and just as he was feeling bored, he received a text from Nagatoro, asking where he's at since she didn't find him at the club room. When Senpai informed her that he didn't attend class due to his cold, she called him. Nagatoro checked on him and apologized to him as she thought that she was the one who infected him. Hearing Nagatoro blaming herself, Senpai assured her that she was fine, and that it was just some cough. When Nagatoro told Senpai to rest so that he wouldn't get scolded by his parents, Senpai replied that his parents were away, making Nagatoro realize that he was alone. After learning Senpai's condition, Nagatoro decided to visit him at his house. When she arrived at his house, he was surprised to see her and didn't want to let her enter the house first, afraid that he might infect her. But Nagatoro defended herself, saying that she was immune to cold since she had just got it first. So Senpai welcomed her into his house. Upon learning that Senpai lied on the couch, Nagatoro urged him to rest on his bed since the couch could worsen his condition. Nagatoro assisted Senpai in going to his room, and upon entering Senpai's bedroom, Nagatoro couldn't help but wonder if he had hidden some erotic books in the room. Teasing him, Nagatoro searched his room to find some of the said books when Senpai began coughing hard, making her stop her search. Nagatoro then made Senpai lie on the bed, and to check his temperature, an idea popped into her head. She pressed her forehead against his forehead, making their faces very close to each other. And Senpai blushed hard. After pressing her forehead against Senpai's, Nagatoro confirmed that he had a fever and didn't let the opportunity slide by teasing him that his face was very red. She really wouldn't let an opportunity to tease pass, even with Senpai's sick condition. On the bed, Senpai was feeling very sick and hot, when suddenly Nagatoro put a towel that was soaked with cold water on his forehead. Nagatoro made sure that Senpai was well taken care of, and when she learned that Senpai's parents would be late, she decided to cook something for Senpai to eat. After making the meal, Nagatoro brought it to Senpai's room and fed him, Meanwhile, as Senpai ate the meal that Nagatoro fed him, he began hallucinating that the Nagatoro feeding him was his wife and felt like he was in a dream. In his feverish state, he thanked Nagatoro and addressed her with her first name, Hayasi. Nagatoro was shocked upon hearing the name that Senpai addressed her, so she teasingly asked him to say it again. But Senpai was too weak to respond and already fell asleep still in the midst of his hallucination. Nagatoro sat beside Senpai's bed and took the opportunity to look closely at Senpai's face. Even though Senpai was asleep already, she kept on pleading with him to call her by her first name again, but Senpai's silence was what responded to her. She then asked Senpai, who was unconscious already, if she could kiss him. That's so bold of you, Nagatoro. Just as she drew her face closer to his, she heard Senpai's mother, who just came home. Nagatoro then met Senpai's mother on her way to exit the house to go home. Senpai's mother thanked her for visiting and taking care of Senpai and offered to drive her home. But Nagatoro said that there was no need for it, since her house was just nearby. The next morning, as Senpai walked to school, he pondered on what happened when Nagatoro took care of him. The memory of him thanking Nagatoro with her first name hit him. Embarrassed and conflicted about which of his memories was a dream and real, he met Nagatoro, who was also on her way to school. While walking together, Senpai thanked Nagatoro for taking care of him. Then Nagatoro's teasing personality struck, and she teased Senpai by kicking his back. In his attempt to stop her from kicking, he grabbed her legs, putting them in a weird position as they blushed, realizing the awkward pose they ended up in. Just in time, Gamo-chan, Yoshi, and Sakura appeared and saw them in that position. Embarrassed, Nagatoro then made it seem like it was a martial arts move, saying that they were just having a practice. While eating, Nagatoro asked out of the blue for any suggestions regarding a good Christmas gift to her sister. After hearing this, her sister teased her if it's for someone special, but Nagatoro denied it while her face was blushing red. So then her sister replied that if it was the case, then she would just give something that could be eaten. Seeing the hesitation on Nagatoro's face, her sister shadily suggested that if she wanted her gift to be remembered for someone special, she should give something that could be used all the time. 
After hearing her sister's opinion, Nagatoro's face brightened as she had figured out her dilemma. As the Christmas season had come, Senpai and Nagatoro were running as they held each other's hand to the giant Christmas tree surrounded by colorful lights. In front of the tree, Senpai brought out a gift from his bag and shyly gave it to Nagatoro. As Nagatoro's bright smile showed, an alarm clock just rang. It turned out that the scene was just Senpai's dream. After Senpai turned off his alarm clock and rose from his bed, his eyes directed to the gift that was the same in his dream that he gave to Nagatoro. He wondered what Nagatoro's real reaction would be once he would give the gift to her and blushed with the idea. With his heart pounding so hard, he hid the gift in his bag as he prepared for school. At school, after the assembly for the end of semester ceremony, Nagatoro followed Senpai and asked him what day it was. When Senpai answered that it was the day for Christmas Eve, Nagatoro excitedly continued, saying that it's a day to remember for couples to declare love, and also for exchanging gifts. As they continued walking, Nagatoro kept on teasing Senpai, who thought of giving his present to her and going home quickly. Right at the moment they passed through the library, Gamo-chan saw them and dragged them both into the library, where Gamo-chan discussed their plans to celebrate Christmas Eve. While the others were having their arguments, Senpai noticed Nagatoro's bag and saw that there was a present peeking out from it. And in turn, Nagatoro also noticed Senpai's bag beside her, and also saw a present peeking out. This led to both of them exchanging awkward glances as they both realized what they were up to. As the awkward atmosphere between them built up, Gamo-chan called Nagatoro if she would join them in karaoke when another girl pointed out Senpai's presence and asked if he was Nagatoro's boyfriend which made the two blush. Out of embarrassment, Nagatoro was quick to deny the statement and explained herself that she just liked to toy with Senpai. Thus, Gamo-chan invited both of them to join their karaoke plan. However, after exchanging glances with Nagatoro, Senpai didn't accept the invitation and made an excuse that he left something at the club room. After hearing Senpai's excuse, Nagatoro also did the same and grabbed Senpai together with her out of the library. That's some sneaky excuse there. Once they arrived at the club room, both pretended to grab things to justify their excuse. When both of them were done, they tried to give each other presents while trying to find the right words to say. Just as they were close to exchanging presents, the door opened, revealing the art club president completely naked in front of them. Nagatoro was annoyed by the president's interruption and lashed out on her. The president then asked them what they were doing in the club room when Nagatoro stormed out of the room, dragging Senpai. As they ran down the hallway, the school announced that all students must go home and leave the school premises. And just then, they saw a strict teacher coming their way. So they rushed to the school infirmary to hide. Inside the infirmary, they tried to exchange their gifts when they got interrupted again upon realizing that they weren't the only ones inside. So they sneaked out of there and went to the rooftop hoping that they would finally get the privacy they wanted. However, upon checking the rooftop, they saw a lot of couples occupying the area, which tensed both of them. They were about to exit the rooftop when Senpai noticed Nagatoro shivering from the cold wind, so he mustered up his courage and decided to give his present to Nagatoro. After opening her gift, which was a muffler, Nagatoro followed and gave her a present to Senpai. On their way home, it was revealed that both of them had the same gift for each other, and wore it together, and they could pass as a couple already. As New Year's Eve came, Nagatoro called Senpai and teased him to make him go to the shrine. Following day, Senpai arrived at the shrine and wondered about Nagatoro's presence in the crowd. Then suddenly, Nagatoro greeted him, wearing the shrine maiden outfit as her part-time job. Nagatoro then guided and accompanied Senpai in doing the activity that was believed to purify their bodies and proceeded to draw their fortunes. Nagatoro boasted that she got a good fortune, while Senpai got the opposite, making him be teased by Nagatoro. As time passed by, more and more people were coming to the shrine, prompting Senpai to leave so that he wouldn't get in the way of Nagatoro's job. Nagatoro then attended the shop of the shrine, selling amulets. And just as she was sulking about her situation, Senpai came to the shop and bought an amulet from her. Before Senpai left the shop, he told Nagatoro that he would wait for her. At the end of Nagatoro's shift, Senpai invited her to go tour around the shrine. As they lined up for their turn to enter the shrine, it was just then that Senpai realized that they were in a matchmaking shrine, which led to Nagatoro teasing him that he hoped that she would become his girlfriend. Senpai denied it out of embarrassment and continued that he wouldn't rely on the deities but rather work it out by himself. After they made their prayers and wishes at the shrine, they walked together going home. Nagatoro then asked Senpai what he'd wished for, to which Senpai answered his family's health. Senpai then returned the question to her, and she answered that she wished to become his bride. Seeing the shock on Senpai's face after she said it, she had said that it was just a joke, and then made fun of him. You better get used to Nagatoro toying with you, Senpai, but who knows? 
she might really want to be your wife. Another day in the club room, upon entering, Nagatoro noticed the box of contact lenses and asked Senpai if he was going to switch to contact lenses to look cool. Embarrassed, Senpai replied that he just wanted to try wearing contacts since his glasses had bothered him lately. So Nagatoro dared him to wear the contacts right at that moment, but after seeing the horrified look on his face, she teased him for being a coward making Senpai even more embarrassed. Nagatoro then offered to help him put on the contact lenses and assured him that she had experience in wearing them, since she had helped her brother with it before. Although skeptical of her offer, Senpai eventually accepted and went to Nagatoro's side on the couch. To Nagatoro sitting close to him, he was trying to calm himself, and then Nagatoro crawled onto his lap and put the contact lenses on him. After putting the contacts in both of his eyes, Nagatoro teased him that since he wasn't wearing his glasses anymore, he couldn't do his signature move every time he was nervous. That's quite a transformation now that Senpai doesn't have his glasses. At the ski mountain resort, Nagatoro and her friends skied downhill. Meanwhile, Senpai, together with two of his classmates, were very impressed upon seeing Nagatoro's group effortlessly sliding down the expert course while they had just been skiing on the beginner course despite joining the ski camp for two years. This caused Senpai to daydream about skiing with Nagatoro and her being a pro. When Nagatoro noticed Senpai, she invited him to ski with her, leaving his two classmates to assume that both of them were dating, to which he instantly denied. Nagatoro and Senpai skied at the beginner course, and Nagatoro saw how bad Senpai's skiing skills were and made fun of him. Wanting to help Senpai, Nagatoro offered to train him and taught him every step on how to ski. However, despite Nagatoro's efforts in training him and after many tries, he still didn't manage to improve his skiing skills, which left him feeling down. Nagatoro comforted and cheered him up, but when her friends passed by and greeted them, Nagatoro happily waved at them, making Senpai feel guilty as he felt like he was holding back Nagatoro from enjoying skiing. That night at the ski resort, Nagatoro saw Senpai together with her classmates, so she approached Senpai and told him to be prepared, as she would train him again. However, Senpai made an excuse that his feet were hurting from skiing for a very long time, so he declined Nagatoro's invitation to ski for the night. Before Nagatoro went on her way to join the others for night skiing, she reminded Senpai to train more. Just as Nagatoro left, Gamochan and Yoshi confronted Senpai and told him that he really wanted to ski with Nagatoro, to which he replied that he would just drag Nagatoro down if he let her ski with him. After hearing his explanation, the two girls left, and Senpai started thinking again about his decision. After giving it some thought, he decided to go night skiing. Senpai carefully practiced his night skiing on the beginner course and kept falling, but with the memory of his training with Nagatoro, he was determined to improve. As he was about to slide, he noticed a kid having trouble stopping his ski, so Senpai skied fast to catch the kid and successfully rescued him from a potential accident. As he continued skiing downhill, two guys were catching up to him and about to hit him, but Nagatoro arrived just in time standing by his side and dragged him away from the guys who were about to hit him. Nagatoro then scolded the two guys, scaring them away. When Senpai had recovered, Nagatoro commended him for saving the child earlier as she had witnessed it from afar. Senpai was surprised to know that she saw him saving the kid. However, Nagatoro teased him, saying that he was swaying like a drunk as he skied, to lighten the atmosphere. Nervous, Senpai asked Nagatoro if she could teach him again, to which Nagatoro happily agreed, and they spent most of the night training his skiing skills. When morning came, Gamochan asked Nagatoro if Senpai improved after their training, to which Nagatoro replied that she should just wait and see Senpai's performance. On the other hand, his two classmates, together with Senpai, asked him to teach them how to ski, assuming that he had improved after his training with Nagatoro. Senpai was hesitant to teach them, but later on, he demonstrated how to ski properly, then suddenly slumped himself into the snow. Nagatoro, who was watching him the whole time, was left shocked. All of her efforts training with Senpai had all been in vain. While hanging out in the club room, Nagatoro noticed Senpai, who kept glancing at her. When she asked him if he wanted anything, Senpai hesitantly asked her to be his human figure model for his drawing. At first, Nagatoro teasingly refused his request and pretended to be busy with other matters. Upon hearing this, Senpai told her that he would just request it next time. But in the end, Nagatoro accepted his request, leading him to tell her to strike poses that felt natural and comfortable to her. She started doing some martial arts stances and posed with stances from Muay Thai, boxing, and capoeira. For the last pose, it naturally came to her and she struck it. When Senpai pointed out that her last pose felt the most natural and that he would draw that pose, Nagatoro seemed uneasy about the pose he liked, but she still followed his request, 
and stayed still while holding the pose. Senpai then began sketching Nagatoro and wondered what pose she was holding. After finishing the drawing, he asked for her opinion about it, and upon looking closely, she teased him saying that the drawing was kind of erotic, as she felt like she was intently observed from head to toe. What do you expect for a drawing, girl? He then asked her what kind of pose it was when she strangled him while telling her it was her original martial art pose, trying not to give him the right answer. At that moment, Gamo-chan, Yoshi, and Sakura arrived in the room and saw Nagatoro strangling Senpai, teasing them. Gamo-chan then noticed the drawing and expressed that it was a good pose, and asked Nagatoro if she wanted to try it again, which changed Nagatoro's mood. Senpai then asked what Gamo-chan meant when Nagatoro walked out of the room, but before she left, she yelled to Senpai that she wouldn't tell him about it, and the three girls followed her out of the club room. In Senpai's judo class, he was having a hard time and not doing well in judo. Nagatoro saw this as she peeked from the window of the room. The teacher then distributed an announcement flyer regarding the school judo tournament, and Senpai was about to show Nagatoro the flyer when she disappeared from the window and was nowhere to be seen. Alone in the club room, Senpai was interrupted when Gamo-chan and Yoshi came in, looking for Nagatoro, as they thought she was in the club room. After finding out that she wasn't there, they talked about judo which led Senpai to ask them if Nagatoro was practicing judo. When they teased him about it, he explained that he was just curious. Gamo-chan then handed Senpai a flyer from her family's gym and invited him to go there. The following day, Senpai arrived at Gamo-chan's family gym and observed it. He peeked inside the gym through the glass wall and saw Nagatoro sparring with Gamo-chan. When Nagatoro noticed that Senpai was watching her, she became distracted and was knocked down by Gamo-chan. Ow! That hurts. Later inside the gym, Nagatoro accused Senpai of being a stalker, but Gamo-chan defended him, saying that she was the one who invited Senpai. Wanting to improve in judo, Senpai asked Nagatoro if she could train him, making her blush and run. Senpai thought that Nagatoro wouldn't accept his request, but suddenly, Nagatoro came back, bringing him a judo uniform. Nagatoro then shyly told him that she could train him, and just as Senpai's spirits were lifted, she threatened him that he better not lose terribly after she would train him. After changing into their judo uniforms, they started with some basic judo moves. When lunchtime came, Gamo-chan asked if they wanted to join her for lunch, but both of them declined the invitation. Since they had some free time, Nagatoro proposed that they should do a free practice of judo. Nagatoro quickly overpowered Senpai and pinned him down. Feeling the pain, Senpai complained that he couldn't hold her heaviness any longer. This angered Nagatoro as it implied that she was heavy she explained to him that she was just manipulating his body weight by controlling his center of gravity. Moments later, Nagatoro and Gamo-chan went for another round of battle. Afterwards, while walking back home together, Senpai and Nagatoro talked about the judo tournament. Then suddenly, Nagatoro became serious and told Senpai that once she would beat Horihara, he would give her a kiss, causing Senpai to blush and tell her not to tease him. Nagatoro clarified that she was not teasing him with a serious and blushing face then ran away, leaving Senpai shocked. The intramurals for the judo competition kicked off, and in Nagatoro's first round of fighting, she easily won over her opponent. When it was Gamo-chan's turn, she faced someone who was a candidate for the national judo team in the Olympics, named Orihara, and lost to the set opponent. After Gamo-chan's battle, she told Nagatoro to avenge her, since Nagatoro would be the one to fight Orihara in the next round. Seeing Nagatoro in the crowd, Orihara approached her and expressed her excitement about fighting Nagatoro. Meanwhile, Nagatoro's mood was ruined after her encounter with Orihara, so she went outside the judo hall, and Senpai saw her. Senpai joined her outside and tried to comfort her. Nagatoro then told him about her past with Orihara. It was revealed that Nagatoro and Orihara used to be friends in the past, training together. At first, Nagatoro kept winning against Orihara, but as time passed, Orihara improved greatly, until Nagatoro couldn't beat her anymore, which affected her interest in judo. Nagatoro added that she wouldn't stand a chance against Orihara, feeling like a tournament wasn't worth fighting for. When Senpai pointed out that the behavior she was showing wasn't like her usual self, Nagatoro got annoyed and told him how he could say something about her as if he knew her very well even though he didn't. Senpai replied that she would never know what would happen until the battle would end, so she shouldn't give up easily, and then cheered her on. When Nagatoro came back to her usual self, she challenged Senpai that she would do her best once Senpai would win a round in the tournament. She teased him further that if he would win, she would give him a kiss. Now that's some way to motivate and challenge someone. Facing his opponent, Senpai was horrified and was knocked down easily. Just as Senpai was about to give up, he remembered Nagatoro's words and their training. In the middle of the crowd, Nagatoro cheered for him loudly, 
prompting him to pin down and counter his opponent. However, he still lost the round by points, but he was still complimented by his opponent and friends. Despite his defeat, Nagatoro decided to keep her promise and to give her all in her match with Orihara. The battle between them was tense, as both of them showed high skills in judo. As their match progressed, most of the crowd cheered for Orihara. However, in the middle of the loud cheers, Senpai yelled Nagatoro's name and cheered for her, making her blush profusely. This just motivated Nagatoro and drove her to pin down Orihara, but she still lost the match by points, just like Senpai. Walking home, Senpai and Nagatoro talked about the judo tournament. Then suddenly, Nagatoro became serious and told Senpai that once she would beat Orihara, he would give her a kiss, causing Senpai to blush and tell her not to tease him. Nagatoro clarified that she was not teasing with him and was serious, and then she ran away, leaving Senpai behind, shocked. Well, Nagatoro is really persistent to have a kiss from Senpai, isn't she? The new school year officially started, and Senpai was thinking of what he should paint when Nagatoro entered the club room. Upon seeing her, he was lost in thought about their previous encounter regarding the deal about the kiss. When Nagatoro saw the blank canvas, she pointed it out, and Senpai replied that he was still thinking of what he should paint. So Nagatoro asked him if he wanted her to be his model, to which Senpai affirmed and requested her to be his model. Thus, Nagatoro quickly changed into her swimsuit, making Senpai taken aback and disagree with the clothes she was wearing. But after some teasing, he then surrendered and started to paint her in her swimsuit. While painting her, he was then reminded again about the deal for a kiss. Nagatoro consistently made fun of Senpai as he painted her, and then they took a break. As Nagatoro sat on the couch, she started to tease Senpai again, and Senpai kept on defending himself. Suddenly, Nagatoro complained of having back pains from posing earlier and demanded a massage from Senpai. Embarrassed by her request, Senpai didn't want to do it, since he thought that it's not a good idea for him to give her a massage. Such a gentleman. However, Nagatoro complained louder that the pain in her back was getting worse, so Senpai was left with no choice but to do a massage on her. Still in her swimsuit and lying back on the couch, Senpai started to massage her on her waist. After Nagatoro had enough of the massage and felt relaxed, she then told Senpai that she had joined the judo club since she had a goal that needed to be achieved. When Senpai asked her if her goal was to defeat Orihara, Nagatoro clarified to him that her real goal was to defeat Orihara so she would get the reward kissing him. Shocked, Senpai questioned if she was really serious about it to which Nagatoro clarified again to him that she was serious about the deal. When Nagatoro asked him if he hated to kiss her, he replied that they shouldn't think of it as a deal prize. So then Nagatoro asked him directly whether he wanted to kiss her or not. The confidence of this girl to ask Senpai directly on his face without any signs of wavering. Before Senpai was given the opportunity to answer her question, the door opened, revealing a new girl student who entered the room. The student then greeted Senpai as if they knew each other for a long time, and said that she wanted to join the art club. As the three of them sat across from each other in the room, Senpai introduced the new student as his clubmate from the art club in his junior high school. The girl then introduced herself to Nagatoro, with her name being Sunomiya. After introducing to one another, Sunomiya asked if both of them were in a relationship, since she heard outside the room earlier that they mentioned the word kiss, so she presumed that they were in a relationship. Nagatoro was the one first to answer and commented on how gross the idea was of her and Senpai being a couple. Hiding your feelings, huh? Huh. <laughs> Good one, Nagatoro. Senpai then followed and explained that they were not in any kind of romantic relationship, and he just asked Nagatoro to be his model sometimes. So Namiya then concluded that Nagatoro was not part of the art club, as she initially thought that Nagatoro was also a part. Senpai then clarified that Nagatoro will be a part of the judo club and that she would be focusing her time on that. So Sunomiya asked if there was any other members of the art club to which Senpai answered, and that it's only him, thus making Sunomiya and Senpai the only members of the club as of now. Nagatoro then warned Sunomiya about weird and other peculiar things regarding Senpai. But Sunomiya said that no matter how weird Senpai would be, she would be able to find the beauty behind it. Just then, Gamochan appeared and asked Nagataro to go to the judo club with her. So Senpai told her to go with her and they would continue working on the painting next time. Seeing Nagataro saddened and Senpai talking to Sunomiya, Gamochan teased Senpai if he was switching partners already to which Senpai clarified that it was not the case, and that he and Nagataro would just work in different places. Tsunamiya then reassured Nagataro that she would take care of Senpai, if she stripped down, saying that she's ready to model for Senpai any time, and wouldn't mind being a nude model. Shocked and annoyed, Nagataro reprimanded Tsunamiya to put on her clothes, 
and told her that she was just like the last president of the art club. Then, Senpai revealed that she was indeed related to the former president. Tsunomiya and the president were cousins. Eh, makes sense. At the judo club, Nagatoro and Gamochan talked about how they were doing badly in their practice when Orihara joined them. As they chatted, Orihara pointed out her observation of Nagataro's performance and that she seemed to be very distracted. Yamo-chan then revealed that it was because of the new member of the art club, Tsunamiya, and that Nagatoro was worried that Tsunamiya would steal Senpai from her, now that she would be very serious with Judo and wouldn't have much time to spend together with Senpai. Nagatoro was clearly embarrassed and annoyed at the same time by how the two overlooked her situation and assumed Senpai to be her boyfriend. Then, Orihara questioned her about what she would pick. Judo or Senpai, to which she happily and firmly answered that she would choose both, earning a funny reaction from the two. Meanwhile, in the art club room, Senpai and Tsunamiya were discussing Senpai's painting of Nagataro, and Tsunamiya stated her observation of Senpai's works, that it had improved so much and that his great improvement was due to his encounter with Nagatoro. She further added that the art club room had become the witness of Senpai and Nagatoro's growing love. To support Senpai and Nagatoro's relationship, Tsunamiya suggested that Senpai should ask Nagatoro for a date. That evening, Senpai waited for Nagatoro outside the judo club room, and when Nagatoro found him, she blushed and teased him if he waited for her to finish at the club, which Senpai denied despite being caught red-handed. Later, as they walked together back home, Nagatoro asked him how he was doing in the club and teased him along the way. She also asked if he ever felt lonely without her being around anymore, to which Senpai replied that he did miss her a bit. Nagatoro then wished that it would be great if there was a place where they could be together other than the club room. Hearing this, Senpai then asked her if there were any places that she wanted to go during their break, but Nagatoro just blurted out impossible places to go, such as Mount Everest, the African savanna, Antarctica to see the penguins, the Amazon rainforest, outer space, the Marianas Trench, and after hearing all of these, Senpai gave up and told her to just forget about it. Can't you read the air, Nagatoro? But then Nagatoro said that they could go somewhere nearby, and that it should be him to figure out the place. Puzzled, Senpai suggested a cinema, but Nagatoro brushed it off, saying that it's very ordinary. So Senpai then suggested other places, but all of them ended up being so bad and not to Nagatoro's liking. They then arrived at the alley where they would part ways, and they bid their goodbyes, and Senpai was still thinking of a good place where he could bring Nagatoro for a date. As he walked down the road, he saw a road sign where there was a penguin show. He then suddenly remembered that earlier Nagatoro wanted to see penguins. That's when something came up in his mind, and he ran back to Nagatoro and asked if she was okay with going to an aquarium. Confused by what he meant, Nagatoro ran towards him and asked for clarification on what he had just said. So Senpai nervously asked her again if she would go together with him to the aquarium. Blushing and smiling brightly, Nagatoro agreed. Someone's excited. Meanwhile, Gamo-chan and Yoshi witnessed them from afar. In the art club room, Sonomiya observed Senpai, who seemed to be lost in his thoughts, so she asked him what's wrong. He told her that he was able to invite Nagatoro to go to an aquarium with him, and she congratulated him and was so proud of him. On the other hand, Gamo-chan asked Nagatoro if she would visit Senpai since they finished early at the judo club, but Nagatoro slyly smiled and said that she didn't need to visit Senpai today. Gamo-chan then assumed from Nagatoro's reaction that Nagatoro was planning to take Senpai's virginity. So Gamo-chan and Yoshi decided to go to Senpai and warn him about Nagatoro. But when they arrived at the art club room, they only saw Sonomiya. Upon hearing them talking about Senpai and Nagatoro's date, Sonomiya concluded that they were both planning to interfere on the aquarium date. The following day, Nagatoro and Senpai met for their date. Meanwhile, far from them, Gamo-chan and Yoshi were tailing them to pursue their goal of protecting Senpai's virginity. On the other hand, Sonomiya, together with the president, kept their eyes on Gamo-chan and Yoshi as their goal was to stop the two girls from interfering with Nagatoro and Senpai's date. While riding the train going to the aquarium, Nagatoro noticed Senpai being so nervous and teased him not to misunderstand their situation as she was just practicing a date with him. Then, she went on by grading and scoring his outfit and his overall actions and performance. Later, they arrived at the aquarium and explored the place, observing different creatures and taking some selfies together. However, as they arrived at the part of the aquarium where there were a lot of couples holding hands, Nagatoro stopped Senpai and asked if there was something that he should have done. Senpai was clueless about what Nagatoro meant, so he kept on getting the wrong answer on what she wanted. While thinking for an answer, Senpai noticed Gamo-chan and Yoshi, 
Not far from them was Tsunamiya and the president. Upon realizing that both of them were being spied on and followed, Senpai grabbed Nagatoro's hand and disappeared into the crowd, trying to get away from the ones following them, making Nagatoro blush with the thought of them holding hands. Oh, Nagatoro, you're falling so hard, aren't you? Gamo-chan and Yoshi were about to follow them when Tsunamiya, together with the president, stopped and chased them. After running away from their pursuers, Senpai and Nagatoro went to order some ice cream. While eating their ice cream, Nagatoro teased Senpai that she wanted to have a taste of his ice cream, and it ended up with both of their ice creams sticking together and tasting each other's different ice cream flavors. After they finished their ice cream, they went to watch the dolphin show. During the show, a splash of water was about to hit Nagatoro, but Senpai shielded her making him soaked with water from the big splash. Nagatoro then dried him up with the towel she brought. Afterward, they continued exploring the rest of the aquarium and enjoyed themselves. At the end of the day, Nagatoro and Senpai walked by the beach with the sun setting. Nagatoro then made a summary of Senpai's scores based on his overall performance during their date. Afterward, Nagatoro told Senpai that she would be willing to go with Senpai when he needs someone to practice having a date with. Hearing it, Senpai asked her if she got to practice well with dating someone, to which she smilingly answered that she was planning to experience a real date with him, which made Senpai blush. Surprised, Senpai also said that he wasn't just having a practice date with her, so Nagatoro suggested that in order to make their date a real one, she gave Senpai two choices, which were either they hug or kiss each other. Senpai then made a choice that in order to formally seal their date, they should hug each other. However, as they were very close to hugging each other, Gamo-chan and Yoshi being chased by Tsunamiya together with the president, stormed into the scene, ruining their almost sweet moment. Well, that's a great disturbance and a very bad timing. In the school, Nagatoro was sulking over Gamo-chan and Yoshi for ruining her date. Sakura then urged her to forgive the two, which she eventually did. The four of them decided to have their lunch at the art club, and as they stormed inside, they witnessed Sonomiya feeding Senpai. Sonomiya then explained that as her way of apologizing to Senpai for ruining his date, she made a lunchbox for him and was planning to do it the whole week. After learning Sonomiya's plan, Nagatoro butted in and said that Sonomiya didn't need to bring lunch for Senpai, as she offered to be the one bringing it to him. Initially, Senpai refused her offer, but after some convincing, he later then suggested that he would accept Nagatoro's offer in return that he would also make Nagatoro a lunch, to which they both agreed and sealed the deal. Walking together going back home, Nagatoro asked Senpai if he would like to continue where they left off, and got interrupted on their date. Nervous, Senpai then put down his bag and slowly embraced Nagatoro. Both of them were blushing as they felt each other's warmth in their hug. With faces blushing and eyes beaming with happiness, Nagatoro expressed how warm Senpai was, while toying with him too, by saying that he was gross, yet warm. Nagatoro won't end her toying with Senpai, but that's how she expresses her feelings for him. Without her constant teasing, Senpai's life wouldn't have any thrills. And on Nagatoro's part, no one could endure all of his toying but just Senpai. The new season ends here, and I hope you enjoyed watching this anime recap.